that have been published this year, UK, US, Europe, and Australia, 63 staff, uh, as we publishing professional software developers. On the projects and customer support side, a lot now being recruited with publishing backgrounds like myself. I was a production manager at Penguin for uh, a long time, so we've got a good appreciation of the needs and requirements of our customers, which is a bonus. These are a few of the customers we've got. You see, we're all creatures great and small, uh, big trades to uh, not so big university presses, so it's about everything on that scale. And we provide the publishing and software management system that drives everything from acquisition right through to publication and core modules being bibliographic and editorial, production, contracts, rights, royalty, and digital asset management. It's developed bits and pieces all the way from right at the start with the idea through to publication at the end, whatever the end is now, it could be um, royalty uh, statements, ebook distribution, uh, auto replenishment routines. Um, Post-mortems, looking at sales files, ingesting the inventory, post-mortems. Uh, we take our metadata very seriously, of course, uh, and uh, it's great having one system on the version of the truth at the heart of your business. And through that system, you can produce um, rich and most importantly accurate metadata, which can be pushed out to a whole range of areas for Onyx management, so Onyx 2 and 3, website, social media, digital packaging, uh, ebook files. And Asset distribution, so it covers spreads, whatever, and we have marketing output as well. So AI is going to be created on the fly, it's also a catalog uh, production. Why publishers choose Biblio? Well, we'll continue involving, uh, we've already sort of future proofed every six to eight weeks as a new release, so you be sure you're getting the newest software developments and including industry standards. It's a modular system, as we're saying, it's got those six core modules. But you've Implement just one and pay for just one, we can have the whole range. Um, I know Pete's got the one at the moment, you're very keen, I know Pete. <laughs> very user friendly, um, speakers are a former customer at Penguin, so you can trust me. And templates um, <laughs> and uh, wizards ensure <coughs> the data entry, um, intelligent validation to enforce your business rules. And there's online support, and you can even pick up the phone and talk to a person. Uh, and we also do webinars and uh, user forums, so we're very approachable, uh, particularly with that publishing knowledge from the people who are actually working there. And compliant with industry standards, which is why we're here today. Uh, we love industry standards, and we were one of the first uh, doctors, I think, of um, FEMA. The FEMA Revo can I call it the FEMA Revolution? Yeah, go on. FEMA Revolution. <laughs> uh, started a couple of years ago, I think, Howard. And uh, we enabled that with our close links, um, with editor and Kit and so on, and also with our customers. Uh, and we add new versions as and when they release. We talked about future proofing system. So in the next release, our platinum release, uh, FEMA 1.2 will be made available to all the customers who do have FEMA and want FEMA in their system. We do one-off and ongoing mapping routines to help implementation, so you can populate historical titles with relevant FEMA codes, and there's bespoke developments to update websites, so driving websites with category themes through the FEMA code supplied, and having to spread the word and encourage use, like we're doing today, hopefully, by sponsoring today's event, uh, which handled the SR with very informative talks, I'm sure. So, uh, if you want any information about it, um, come and talk to me afterwards. Uh, and I'll pass over, thank you, uh, to Howard.
kind of quickly today, generally sort of background and updates and sort of where we are to set the scene and for SARS to talk. It's implemented here at Faber, or a few slides down. Um, so let's first remind ourselves then of the benefits of Thema. Now, I'm hoping there's, there's anyone in the room who doesn't know what Thema is, it is the single unified subject classification scheme for the global book trade. Okay, just get that out of the way. Um, and it was developed, of course, to, to address a long standing problem, a problem of communication. We live and work increasingly in a, in a global market, facilitated by digital and online publishing and sales. The more diverse um, your, your suppliers and your publishers, the more the need for communication arises. Communication works best if the standards, you all agree, the common language of how to communicate. Standards work best when there's only one. Uh, lots of standards, it's, it's, a, it's a start, but it's not, it's not the final solution. Um, so Onyx is a classic example of that. Yeah, not so long ago, people used to send their information in all sort of bespoke formats. But Onyx came along, and this is now everybody where you communicate with the graphic information. It's a standard, it's global. Now, even since the Divina Dublin of Onyx, which you find all over the world, book trade subject schemes tended to remain at a national level. Big. The big scheme was developed um, in the UK for UK use. It has a UK bias. That was, that was the, the, the point of it. So there are many national schemes. Just a small sample, if you look at Onyx List 26, 27, um, these are just some of the schemes that are in place now in various countries around the world. It's, uh, yeah, it's difficult to communicate. The traditional solutions to this problem well, either you sit down and you apply all of these schemes in parallel, all the ones that you need to send out, depending on who you're talking to, which quite a lot of overheads there, or you had mappings. Now, mappings are quite smart. You put one value in, and then it, you, it, you know, it executes a little program that generates the equivalent in a different scheme. Now, it's no more work. But the schemes are often quite different. The approach top is different. They're different in different size and detail. Things just don't work very well automatically quite often. Also, because people would develop their own mappings, there's a proliferation of them, which means that the outcome was the same. You start at A, you don't always get to B. Yeah, inconsistencies. So also, because of this, um, it was just an automatic process, there was a risk of degrading the data, losing precision, which is a loss of control of your data. Yeah? It's not what you said. It's an approximation of what you said. And if you get, maybe that value you get mapped again to a different scheme, and you, you, you're losing value, you're losing detail, you're losing control, making it harder to find, and therefore harder to be able to buy. Mapping is also, I mean, it's quite complex, it needs to be maintained. If one, if one either the two schemes you're mapping between gets updated, you have to update the mapping, otherwise it gets out of date. So it's not labor free, there are a lot of overheads with, with mapping. And of course, there being so many, as we saw before, um, this is something that um, I think Dai Kobo called Mapperama. They, say they just have people spend all their time doing mapping. Every time they get we want to sell into a new country, what's the subject scheme? Oh, I've never heard of that. Send it to us, we'll work out a map. So. so, this is what Mapperama looks like. This is what you had to do if you wanted to sort of reach out to the, to the global um, marketplace. So, you're in the UK using BIC, you want to deal with someone in Spain. We have to do a map if they have to do one back. Bicep, quick to bicep. And so, by extension, everybody needs to set up all these one to one mappings all around the world in order to communicate and not communicate that well. The new solution is the map. Everybody understands the universal language. Now, you don't necessarily, even if you retain your old scheme, which I recommend you do, certainly for the foreseeable. You only have to maintain one mapping, or one link, or one extra scheme that we do, which is Thema. If you speak Thema, then you understood anywhere in the world. Yeah, so it's, we expect the Americans to, to keep BICEP, but add Thema. We will keep BIC, but add Thema. Um, some people have already taken the step of just going solely Thema, you see that shortly. But you don't have to. Yeah? You, can, you can work alongside um, your existing scheme. Um, as long as you can connect to Thema, So clearly, international trade requires international standards. 
the impact theme that is that it was created by the users to create a real problem. It's not that we didn't sit down and sort of ivory tower and work this out or hand it down. It was, you know, people came to say, we need this, this is a problem, how do we have this stuff? Um, so we can replace all these local schemes ultimately and these mappings. You get clear a direct communication. It's not converted or de degraded or confused. This is everything to retain control of decision of your data. You know, what you said remains. Um, improves scalability, increased sales, which is what we all want. It's not a guarantee, <laughs> but there's a sort of uh, you know, a logical progression there. And that's what it's there. Who benefits from this? Well, probably pretty much everybody. Publishers can send the same rich data about their products to whoever they're talking to. They don't have to sort of set up bespoke feeds because they're going to different country. Retailers and libraries can receive the same rich source of data from people, you know, from their, their suppliers and publishers from a wider range of countries all around the world. Aggregators, we benefit. We have to do less manipulation. We get data, we have to change it because we're exporting it to the client in Sweden, Germany, or whatever. We theme it, we just pass it through. And consumers benefit because it increases the access to, uh, to global output, global publishing. It increases the ease of people anywhere in the world can find stuff and connect with stuff. Um, if I can update then where we are and also put it into a, a global context. Um, you might think it was only a few years ago that FEMA was, uh, was first launched in 2013, quite uh, a year later, and now we're on FEMA version 1.2, which is, we just didn't quite get it out of 2015, it sort of rolled on to 2016, so it's pretty new. Don't be alarmed though, I mean, the, you know, the beginning of any standard, there's also a little sort of flurry of releases before it settles down, and it's not expected that it will be updated annually. Uh, maybe two, in two years would be, would be appropriate. And so far, it's been fully backwards compatible. We're just adding stuff. So everything in, in Thema 1.1 is valid in Thema 1.2. We haven't had to relocate or deprecate or do anything like that. We're just adding stuff. Typically, because new countries are coming in, saying this is great, um, but we haven't got a code for this, which is important in my market. You'd be surprised how many codes for skiing they need in Norway. <laughs> Quite a lot. Um, so what we did in Thema 1.2, we added some new subject categories and some qualifiers, about the qualifiers, talk about the structure of the data, um, and some new national extensions. And since 1.2, we've finally agreed the Chinese geographical national extensions. That was after a prolonged period of delicate negotiations um, about where things should sit, all the regions, the autonomous regions and provinces and so on had to be arranged in a certain way. It took some convincing that we've um, so yes, um, the theme is about to be a national standard in China. Um, this thing about national extensions, just to explain it, um, the theme is based on the big classification scheme. If you look at it, it's like big. And it does look big because it is, you can always say it's big three. Yeah, it's based on big, it's a, it, it's a development. So it's got the subject categories, as big users you should be familiar with, plus the qualifiers. It's a history whereof qualifier China. It's a phrase book which language qualify Spanish. If you put the two things together, that, that basic um, subject and qualifier combination is carried over um, because we think it's a really useful and powerful structure. The clever bit, the only clever bit we had to do to make BIC a UK standard into FEMA, the world standard, was to add this thing, this concept of the national extensions, which are sort of embedded within the qualifiers. And it means that the national group can drill down to as much detail as they want. Um, the easiest way to understand this is in the geographical area. So if you look at in BIC, you see um, Italy, there's one code for Italy. If you look in Thema, Italy, there's about 50 codes for Italy, but they drill down to all the, I'm not sure what they're called, <laughs> the, the parts, the regions of Italy that they need to, that, that they want to reflect. Um, you don't have to use that. Yeah? You can open or close these up because they're, they're, they're beyond the shared subject and qualifier level. So they're there in FEMA, but you don't have to use them. If people send you one, all you do is close it up until you find something you do recognise and it will say Italy, even though they might have sent you Rome. Yeah, you can convert it as Italy. 
is a bit detailed, it's still correct. And it's this facility that enables FEMA the phrase, look local, act global. So anyone in a FEMA country look at it and think, wow, this is a really good scheme for my publishing, for my country. You know, all this detail, I've never seen it in a subject scheme before. But you don't have to use that. For exporting it, you can, you can round these things up back to country level or so on. And that's the, the only little you know, clever addition we have to make to make FEMA acceptable. Compared with BIC, I mean, you know, the big message is, BIC is for the UK theme, right? it's, it's international in scope. So some of the advantages is that much, many more fiction jobs, a much richer um, fiction section. We drew on BICEP quite a lot from that, they have some really good codes. Um, it covers, we can, because we're updating, we can get, um, we can cover new trends very uh, quickly and um, try and add down by adult colouring books. Who knew? Not in BIC, is in FEMA. Um, Massively extended graphic novel and manga section because we had input from the US and France, particularly where these are you know, well established areas and this is where it's got to be. Um, it for children and teenagers, again from BICEP quite a lot, for data science and technology because science and technology is changing and developing. There's a massive range of art and music stars. We, Vic has a sort of a few subject headings we did in, in uh, FEMA, which pull them out. And um, qualifiers where this is sort of an extensible list and then limit and have to squeeze them into the scheme as a massive list of uh, artistic and creative styles. Theme offers a greater use of what Graham Bell tells me is called post coordination, which is where it's not just the one thing, it's the combination of the two. You build up a picture by combining all of the, the sort of facets of the scheme that you define. Um, Big, for example, would say, well, fiction is fiction and you can't do anything else with it. Thing says, oh, no. What well, great if we can describe fiction, yes, it's fiction, but then if it's about a particular topic, add that other topic in. If it's set in a particular place, add that geographical setting. If it's set in a particular time, add that too. Because people understand that fiction is fiction, but they also, you know, it's related to the world. If you're going on holiday to Italy, you might not be well as your travel guide and your phrase, but you might want to a novel that's set in Italy. Why not? The you might enable you to discover that. To say that to people to discover that. <coughs> and again, very importantly, BIC is frozen. BIC 2.1, that's it, not going to be updated. No. All developments are going to be in FEMA. So again, thinking of it as BIC 3, it's quite a good way to And my message is the thing is being used in, in anger. It's already the primary scheme, the industry standard. Got in Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and Germany. Partly because, especially in Germany, they didn't have a very good scheme before. Nobody really liked it. So it was not even an open door. The Germans were driving FEMA pretty strongly in the early days. Saying, once you want to come on, come on, throw it out. Um, and it was adopted very quickly. And it's been rolled out. The German books in print, absolutely all FEMA. Everyone sending to a VLB have to send it in FEMA. Well, they're fine, though. They have to pay more, that's right. If you pay more, it hasn't got to be. So, good incentive. Um, Greek government, got some money, not sure where they got money from, um, to set up a books in print project, um, they used to be. As I said, it's about to come out of some in China, which is not really what we're expecting this, this is so early, really, you know, maybe one day. We've got USA and China working on the same standard. Okay, you can call this the global standard, now. that's it's quite close to stuff. Um, of course, in North America, BICEP very deeply rooted and will continue, I think, for the domestic market. But they're aware that if you can export, you need the you need to sort of have another language. Um, it will certainly facilitate, I think, um, the Spanish language market. There's a massive market in the USA Spanish speakers, um, but European Spanish publishers haven't necessarily been able to reach it. This will help because they'll understand the they can communicate better. Um, Around the world, various other um, countries are um, you know, adopting it, looking at it, translating it, thinking about it. If you look on the big website, the, the editor website, um, I'll give you the link to it later, you'll see the translation. There's this great browser where you can change the language and see the Chinese extension to the Arabic text and, the, and um, Hungarian and so on. So it gives you an idea of um, the way it's being rolled out and where it's being adopted. Um, in a sort of graphical way. Um, so the green is 
they are fully female. Yeah, we wouldn't think of doing anything else. The RNG is sort of, well, we're actively involved in doing it. They've got a, they've got a national group, they're contributing proposals, they've got national extensions, they're translating it and so on. Yellow is expressions of interest, but then it sort of, they haven't sort of carried through to the next stage yet. Yeah, they're, they're certainly aware of it, they're thinking of it, um, but they haven't sort of, they've lost a bit of momentum really, so it's all those out. So I know there's, sort of, there's a radiating um, pattern, but we're surprised how quickly, and you know, we could genuinely call it um, a global scheme, the way the way it's taken up. Um, so to put it to the UK perspective, um, it is in use in the UK. Okay, BIC is still dominant. FEMA is in use. Um, on our system, uh, we have over 10 million records now classified for FEMA. Um, in most cases, this has been mapped from BIC. So that just gets you a full time. That, that is FEMA. I'm going to be the best, but it's like, it is FEMA. But we're starting to apply it um, uh, manually because you really get the full benefit when you do that. And our new system coming out in um, early next year, we can have said that last year. <laughs> You know how these things are, they would say longer than anything. Um, it's, it's, it's designed to be like a hybrid, you know, either one on Bic or theme, or even by sign. It doesn't matter. All those things come in, that's the sort of holy trinity. If you get one of them, you can get the other two. And we'll, we'll, we'll be making sure that we're fluent in, in all three. But eventually, I think we'll just go to theme and the rest will, will spring from it. Because theme is richer than both Bic and Bicep. If you get the theme, it's easy to map down the Bicep. You can't really map. One day the classifiers, we have a team of classifiers taking all this stuff, will just migrate to FEMA, having to learn to solve the job if you like on one side. I think FEMA is also being um, used and accepted and sent out by Barca and BDS. And as you heard from Andrew, it's enabled in major publishing systems, gen systems, as well as virtual sales. You know, they're, they're, the, the, the tools are there. Here's just some of the publishers um, who are currently sending FEMA to us. Um, you see it's a good mix there, uh, trade, academic, children's, US, UK, European. It's, um, you know, it increases sort of every, every, every month and the publisher will start sending. And there's great support from retailers. This was the missing link for quite a while. Publishers were saying, yes, okay, we'll start doing this, but they won't do it forever. <laughs> Unless retailers say, this is great, we want it, let's send it in. So we, we are getting this support. Black will see that they're, they're concentrating on the, the richness, yeah, the way the more we can express the theme. And they're very keen to use it, especially in our online site, to make these connections to find stuff and, and connect customers to books. Also, again, recognise um, the, the improved discoverability, and Amazon echoed that as well. Amazon are very, you know, supportive of FEMA. They have a representative on the UK FEMA group. They haven't come out and said anything more public than this, but that's quite something to get a quote from Amazon about anything. And I know they're working at it, but they're not going to sort of, you know, they're not going to sort of say, well, we, we, we demand it now. But they, if we talk to Amazon, they will, FEMA will be part of that conversation. They're interested. They want to know. They want to sort of um, twine it into the browse category. This is the UK branch, but this is all Europe, and I know they, they share a lot of data, so they can assume there's some parallel activity um, in .com. The advantages the UK uses in particular um, that we have in relation to FEMA are that, um, well, it's based on big. It's not a whole new language you have to learn. It's really just things that add, add, advanced big. So the legacy records and mappings is a very good and easy mapping to, to, to convert stuff to um, FEMA. Also, the UK trade has always been export-minded. Yeah? Always. You know, and it's always sort of punched above its weight in like the global market because the English language. I mean, we've been selling to Commonwealth countries because English is the, the language of so many sort of um, scientific and technological activities. There's always been a market around the world for English language. I mean, way out of. Um, so we're geared up for it. FEMA just helps that. So it's, it's not a new thing. Um, it's a mature market. So we have the physical challenge, we have the infrastructure yeah, to be able to adopt this. 
Um, in design, as I said, it's, it's a, I've always done a massive benefit. And in theme, English is the hub language. So for every um, heading in there, there is an English version of it. And there may also be a translated version if it has been translated. But it's always a uh, hub version. So you can guarantee there won't be bits that you can't understand because it's um, good for reading. Um, and you kind of own it. Um, through BIC, you know, BIC has a sort of stake in, in the theme, okay, but these are property rights in BIC go forward into the theme, um, through the membership in TUR, any TUR, provide governance of the theme and they, they run it. Um, there's a UK theme group, which I'm the chair, which feeds into um, the theme international steering committee that's what this is. Um, and I'm also chair of that, but I've got to say I've run out, my, my tenure runs out in, in, in Frankfurt. Stand out. So I'll be representing the UK in there. So the channels are saying, I want this code. This is my need to change this, are there for you to influence and drive the theme. It's not done by a sort of you know committee. It's a committee, but you can feed into the committee and then you can say what you want. Make the theme that's your scheme, steer it where you want to go. And finally, looking at the next, these are the next actions I want you all to go around and do. It's at migrate to theme, and you'll hear shortly about precisely how um, it's in favour. So, publishers, go to the editor's site, loads of stuff there, um, the, the, the mappings and sort of full files of it, and a, a sort of overview of this in this case. Um, and a fantastic um, online browsing, really intuitive. But you can do it in any language you like. <laughs> um, but you know, not fair English, I've got to do. Um, and it really helps you get a grip on things to sort of see the difference, see the richness of it. So it's, it's a great thing to play, to play around with. Um, and then, of course, start discussing with everyone in your information supply chain all the way along. People will send it to you, people, people that you're sending to, system providers, and so on. I'm sure people will confirm. I'll be very keen to come and help you. And it, it involves lots of areas then, you know, you're, you're, from your, your editorial and your data people and your marketing people all need to know and connect to the community theme and how to see what the advantages are. And then, you know, get a project alongside all your other priority projects, I know. Um, so that would be really nice. Um, and a little sort of you know, overview of how to do it is don't throw the bit away. Take the bit, it's very useful. Well, there was years of bit code still there, but you can use them as the basis version, you can find a mapping on the editor site. And BIC is easy to create into the theme, so. um, Start to assign and transmit the, uh, uh, alongside BIC for new titles. So I'm not supposed to need to go and reclassify your entire backlist, just start with the new titles for the originals there. You won't get the true value in the theme map just by mapping from BIC. It will only be as good as BIC was. You, know, you need to sort of sit there individually and say, right, wow, I can say all these extra things. To see the difference. And full day course that was any examples of how, you know, so it's a little bit of a missing thing. So you really just do the pictures. Retailers, well, again, you've seen that, um, uh, you know, there is a, a certain major retailers that have some interest, you need to get involved if you're not already. Um, and in a way, you have the most to gain, especially if you're trying to sell to different countries and get stuff in from different countries, is that the, the, you know, the map around thing goes away. Easy to get the information out. You've got this um, rich, rich data you can you can use, especially online. But as I said before, publishers have taken the burden of this so far. They're starting to send it out. If it's not being pulled in and accepted or demanded, they're not going to do it forever. So that's the momentum is still going, but the, it now needs the retailers to kick in and say, yeah, let's increase this momentum, push pull, um, and it will really. Um, so, summarise the key points is that, especially if you want to trade internationally, you need FEMA. FEMA is live. You can use it. Do it. You can get your system, you can find it there, and you can start using it, send it out. And I do genuinely believe the UK Book Trade is uniquely placed to explore the benefits of this export minded um, approach, and also the fact that it's starting from big. Yeah? No one else is better placed than. Oh yeah, and begin.
in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just even now, as um, and it says by the link, and so I'll tell you how he managed it. So you'll have the benefits of his experiences um, and to help you along the way. Okay, I'll hand over to uh, Bill Morgan. So, um, my name is Azar Hussain, I'm Head of Data here at Favour. Uh, Elena has kindly given me 20 minutes, but I promise I'm not going to talk for that long. Um, so, I just following on from Howard, I just wanted to give you an outline of how we actually implemented uh, FEMA here at Favour. So, a couple of months ago, uh, I explained FEMA to a friend of mine who doesn't work in publishing. And the day after, she sent me this XKCD comic, which I will let you read. So, quite possibly, I didn't explain FEMA very well. <laughs> Either that or she was being sarcastic, which I think is the more likely of the two, actually. Anyway, um, I'll come back to this a bit later. So, um, how did we actually implement FEMA? Well, before I do that, I just want to go over quickly why we implemented FEMA. So, other than everything Howard's just said, I've just got three really quick reasons. The first one is having a common language, which we could speak and which would be in common with all of our partners was something which was obviously very, very attractive to us, just thinking in the lines of Onyx, and it was something we wanted to be a part of. The second one was precision. So just to give you one example, within BIC, I would say a novel is science fiction, whereas in FEMA, I could say it's steampunk. So just the ability to be a lot more expressive and eloquent about the subject matter of our books was, again, something that was very attractive. And the last one was reducing duplication. The idea that one day, one day, we might have an end to this constant mapping that Howard was talking about earlier, and we'd have one classification scheme to rule them all. So how did we actually do the implementation? I'm going to split this in two parts, the technical and the user. And the technical was surprisingly pretty straightforward. So the first thing we had to do was have a conversation with your database provider. We use Biblio, but regardless of who you're with, this is probably what you'll need to do, unless you can import code in yourself. Um, this is actually pretty straightforward. You don't have to do a lot of work here. Most of it falls on your provider, and most providers are very good in terms of doing this. So once you've got the FEMA codes in your testing system, I know it's obvious, but I have to say it, you've got to test. So all the usual things, make sure all the codes are there, how a user's going to assign them, how do you feed them out in Onyx, does the Onyx file look the way you'd expect, your provider will do all that, obviously, but you need to do it as well, just so that if there are any issues, you catch them before your users do. So this is something you can kind of be doing in the background, uh, but the next part is to do with your users, which is going to be the bulk of the presentation. So when you're introducing change into any organisation, as we know, you've got your choice between the two classic management styles. You can either go for the carrot, where you reward and reinforce positive behaviour, or you can go with the stick, where you just keep hitting people until they do what they're told. And uh, I know which one I prefer. And I think any healthy implementation should probably have a bit of both, so I'm going to start with the carrot. So the very first thing we wanted to do was to explain what FEMA was to everybody, as Howard said, and not just to editorial teams. So how do you do that? Well, actually, why do you do that? Um, my thinking was, I wanted everyone to know, because I thought at some point, Marketing teams are going to see FEMA codes on AIs, and I wanted them to know what they were. Or our rights department would have conversations with foreign publishers, and FEMA would probably come up, and I didn't want them to look blank. So it was important that everybody knew what it was about. But how to do that? I knew that if I sent an email, nobody would read it, and if I gave a presentation, no one would come. <laughs> so um, what I did, we had a company meeting at uh, Faber once a month, and everyone has to come. It's in this room, actually. So I said, can I just have... 10 minutes at the end of the company meeting. So when uh, Stephen Page, our executive, when he was uh, wrapping up, he said, okay, so that, that concludes this month's company meeting, and now, as I was going to talk about classification codes, and everyone looked around like this, <laughs> no one could go anywhere. Um, but it was fine, I wasn't even 10 minutes. There were four slides, it was really quick. Uh, I put lots of jokes in. I showed them the XKCD comic, they laughed, not as much as you, but they did laugh. Um, and it was fine, everyone had an understanding of what it was. So that was step one. The second step was really drilling down to the editorial users who are going to be using the codes on a daily basis. So how do we train those guys? So again, there's an editorial meeting once a week. Everyone from editorial has to go. So I invited myself to that meeting and we just hooked up a projector and we went through it on the testing system. We said, okay, here's a book. We're going to assign a code. This is how it works. And people could stop and ask questions. 
we have documentation, and I said to people, look, if you actually want me to sit down with you when you're doing this for real, if you, uh, you know, need a bit more hand-holding, um, I didn't actually say that. I said if you need more support, um, I'd go straight to HR for that. Um, I'm happy to do this with you again, it's fine. So we made sure that there was a lot of support for users because as we know, people learn in different ways. So some people want to watch you do it, some people want to read about it, some people actually need that one-to-one. -one. So that's what we did. Another thing we did relates to the Biblio editorial dashboard. Now I know some of you who have Biblio have this, some of you may not. It's basically um, a dashboard which allows you to put together a lot of edition level data in one place. It's completely configurable. Our dashboard looks like this. This isn't all of it, there's a lot more. Uh, but it's made up of panels, as you can see, and you can configure these panels to do whatever you want. And the one in the middle is the one I want to show you, the one called classification codes. So what we did is we put all of the classification schemes in one dedicated panel. Uh, so you can see exactly what's going on. You can also edit on the fly on that screen. So you can just click through, you go to another interface, you can add your theme codes or take them away or amend them or whatever you want. And I'm just showing this because editors really, really like this. They found it really useful. They make it simple and easy for them to see and make amendments. And I think end users get quite a bad rap, and rightly so in many cases, but I think we're asking more and more of our end users in terms of metadata. So I think it's really important. We try and support them as much as we can through technology and software, and this was a really good example of that. So all of this is uh, me being quite nice and friendly. I'm now going to move on to the stick. So we've got the training we've done over here, it's all finished, we've done the testing, everything's fine. So now what do we do? We want to take the theme codes in testing and we want to put them in the live system so people can start assigning them. If I'd been doing this a few years ago, I would have sent an email going saying, Hi everyone, on the first of the month we're going to put theme codes in live, so could you please start putting them against your titles, if you don't mind, thank you very much. And that email would have been treated with the contempt which it deserved, um, and no one would have done it. So I didn't do that. What I did is I went to our editorial director, and I went to our operations director, who was good luck would have it as my boss. And I said, look, do you remember that presentation I did on FEMA? Well, we've done the testing, we've done the training. What I want to do is I want to make it mandatory to assign a FEMA code to every single new acquisition. Now, it's a few more clicks, it's a bit more work, but based on all the benefits we've seen, I think it's worth it. So would you support me if I did that? And they both said, yes, do it. So, I sent an email around saying, okay people, on the first of the month, the new acquisition screen is going to look like this, which is exactly how it used to look, but that is now there, which is uh, a field for a theme code, and you can't move on until you've assigned that code. So because of this, um, we can say that every single book we've set up in the last 18 months definitely has a theme code. And I say this was the stick, but actually it was fine. I didn't really get that many complaints about this, and I, I like to think the reason why people were okay with it was because they understand, they understood why they were doing it, and it was pretty simple. It is literally just a couple of clicks. And also, if you use Biblio, you can do this yourself in maintenance. You can go into maintenance and you can make this mandatory on the new acquisition. You don't have to ask virtual cells, you can just do it. And if you don't use Biblio, I'm sure your provider could do something similar so you can enforce something like this. So, I'm just going to round off with just a few loose ends. Um, the first thing, Onyx recipients. I kind of glossed over this before. So when we were testing, we did send uh, files, Onyx files, to our recipients with theme codes. And if I'm honest, we, we got a kind of a muted response. I didn't hear that much back in terms of people saying, yeah, we're going to take these codes and use them. And some people have said to me, well, what's the point of doing all this? If you don't know what your recipients are doing with the codes, why should, why should I bother doing all this when I don't know what's going to happen? And I can understand that, but I would actually argue that um, from a recipient's point of view, there's no point them gearing up to take FEMA codes if publishers aren't going to send them. So if we're saying, well, we're not going to bother because no one's doing anything downstream, and recipients are saying, well, no publishers are signing it, so why should we care? We end up with what I like to call a Mexican metadata standoff. <laughs> I mean, you know, someone's got to back up. So I just think, between the two of us, I actually think the publishers, the onus is on us because we own the metadata, we create it, we push it downstream. I think really the, the initiative should be taken by us and we should make the first step. Uh, the second point is backlist. So uh, everything that has been set up in the last 18 months has a FEMA code, which is great, but what about everything before? So Faber has a very big backlist just because of what we publish. Um, you can use mappings, as Howard mentioned, to create your FEMA codes, but we didn't do that, so I feel massively vindicated that Howard said that's not the right way to do it, or it's not the best way to do it. The reason why I didn't do that, um, there were two reasons. The first reason was, 
I wanted our editorial teams, as and when they had time obviously, to go back and assign the theme of codes using the dashboard and the interface because I thought the, the real way to get people to engage with Thema and to appreciate the sophistication that it gave us was to actually engage with the codes and use them and see what difference it made. It's all very well for me to say, hey, theme is great, but I actually wanted people to use them to see for themselves. The second reason why I didn't do that was because of interns. Um, I'm not going to say what you think I'm going to say. So we have a lot of interns coming through the door at Faber through publishing MAs and, and other places. And um, I don't talk to them very much, or to be more accurate, they don't talk to me very much. I literally see them for an initial session on Biblio, and then I never talk to them again for the next two months. And I've always thought that was kind of crazy, because they spend time in editorial, and marketing, and rights, and design, and production, and they don't spend any time learning about metadata. And the whole point of the internship is surely to understand how the business functions. So, Thema was a really good way of trying to challenge that, because what I did is I went to the editorial director and said, can I just have half a day of the intern's time? And I explained what Thema was, and I gave them 50 titles. And I said, these are your titles. Go and assign them. Thema codes. So they would read the copy and look at the big codes and the keywords, and they would make their decisions. And then we'd sit down and we'd review it. And it wasn't a question of that's the wrong code, but we'd just discuss, OK, on what basis did you choose this over that? Um, and I think often the interns found this quite refreshing, because a lot of the tasks they were given were often quite repetitive or mechanical, where classification, as we know, it's really subjective. You've really got to think about what you're doing and why you're doing it. So it often led to a really interesting conversation where the intern would end up saying, OK, so if you do this like this, what would you do in that scenario? How do you do this? How do you get this to that person over there? And it was a really good way, I found, of you know just engaging the intern and making them understand a bit more about the role of metadata. And I, I'm digressing slightly here, but I, I think it's a point worth making because I don't know about you, but when I was at school, I didn't think, when I grow up, I want to manage metadata for a living. <laughs> so, I just think it's crazy that we've got the stream of very intelligent young men and women coming through the door, and they bypass us completely. I thought FEMA was a really good way of just trying to correct that. And the last point, as Howard mentioned, FEMA 1.2, I think I'm literally going to get 1.2 in my next Biblio release. Again, you don't have to do, you have to do very little work. Um, it's completely backwards compatible, none of the codes are deprecated, they don't fork. Uh, you shouldn't really have to do anything apart from the basic testing, and in return for that you get, as Howard mentioned, just over 300 extra codes to work with. So it's definitely worth um, keeping an eye on your version. So the very last thing I want to say is just um, to remind you of the editor link which Howard showed you. Uh, the editor website has pretty much everything you're going to need about FEMA, but you also have, I believe, in front of you uh, the big white on FEMA, which is just two sides of A4, very short. It has that link and a couple of other resources. Do have a look um, at the FEMA resources online. It should give you everything you need. And the very last thing I wanted to mention was that, um, as Howard has said, FEMA has been incredibly successful over the last few years. It's been more successful than I think any of us hoped for. But it's really, really important that we all uh, engage with FEMA and get on board with it. Because as we know about standards, they don't work unless we all do it. Just think of Onyx, for example. So to avoid the scenario of the XKCD comic that I showed you at the beginning, where FEMA just becomes another competing standard vying with all the others, um, it's really critical we all engage. And I hope my presentation has shown you that it's actually not that hard. You don't have to do that much. It's not going to be a massive project that's going to take months of your life. It's actually pretty straightforward. So I'm probably going to regret saying this, but beyond today, if you do have any questions about, obviously I'm around now, but if you do have any questions about FEMA beyond today, I'm happy for you to get in touch with me. If I can help you, I'll, I'll certainly try. Um, but if you do have any questions now, now's the chance. Um, I think this is a time for questions for either myself or Howard. Is that any questions at all? <laughs> Got one. Um, yeah. Like, your use of the run, are they they're inputting a theme code, a bit code, and a bytecode code in editorial? Yeah, we don't use any mapping, so they have to do all three, unfortunately. Yeah. Is there a blank available um, of mapping uh, to Ebola, to Thema, from bit to Thema, or uh, bytecode to Thema? And yes, there's a um, bit to Thema mapping. And on, again, on the, editor, from the editor side, you can get that. It's only 1.1 at the moment, it's the updated. It's just a matter of adding a few more lines. There is a bisect of theme and mapping you can get from BISG. If you're not a member of BISG, you may have to pay, because that's the way things. Um, 
so yes, those mappings are there. Um, I think the Victor theme mapping is better, partly because theme is a better fit with it, so you get a better result. So Biasac has to sort of, mm, it's got some compromises in it because sometimes it, you know there's no direct equivalent there. But nonetheless, you will get a reasonable, valid um, thema out of Biasac. Now, what we need to develop also is a thema two bit and a thema two Biasac version. Then that bit, that bit. And obviously the first thing was, well, everyone starting from Bitcoin by SAC, we need to get a theme out. But increasingly now, as um, theme of Bitcoin is the thing you use, then it should just spawn Bitcoin by SAC. And that will work better, as I said. It would be better to work map from theme to those other schemes than to it. But most people are starting from the other schemes. Yeah, I think from the publisher's perspective, that would be really key because yeah. um, I know we're really keen to talk about them now, they're adding. Theme subject classifications to our title, but we are still also adding BIC yeah. and BISAC, yeah. and that's to our UK editions as well. So, yeah. as long as Amazon don't change and have BISAC as their driver, and as long as Theme is the most rich, we'll still want both of those. Yeah, just so uh, but we're still that. entering the Vico, it's because that less rich BIC, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, um, I understand you can map either way, but really. It's mapping down from theme too big that will yeah. become yeah. Um, a, a help for publishers. The other way is a bit of a yeah. yeah, I'd agree with that because from a publisher point of view, it would be easier to get just the theme read. If you needed Bitcoin or ASAC, you would just map it down. You just choose one yeah. thing that I'd recommend. Yeah. Your, your, your quality of your big won't deteriorate. Uh, well, that's a grand question. Is there any mapping at all currently? You can do it, yes. And we've worked with some publishers to do that. You can get, it depends on your list and which categories you've got. Because um, you can get, I say, I don't know what percentage down the road. I mean, you run into trouble, I think, how the condition rules, don't you think? That there are slightly that? different rules about what you can do in the theme that you can't do in BIC. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, no one's policing it, but there are conventions to be like it, how they But you can, so you can. You can do that and you can discuss where the issues are. And certainly with the publisher we did have done a mapping exercise because you can do the historical drivers all once for going forward where you just put the big in and it automatically assigns a theme. But you have to be aware of there are limitations there. I think yeah, the other would be the other way around. Yeah. Would be moving towards a theme or input. Yeah. And then you know being able big to write. Yeah. Well particularly big out by so. Right, okay. Gibson additions, if you choose a theme of one, you can provide suggestions. These are the closest to it and these are the closest to it. Then user can select from Yes, that's right. In certain areas, you think, well, it could be either of these, and you can sort of pop up and you can choose. Or you can set it up so that, well, this area, this whole subject doesn't map very well. You just have to do it manually. But where it does, it's easy. Sometimes there's a one to one yeah. direct equivalent. Sometimes yeah. it's the same code and heading. Mm -hmm. yeah, you really see this is big. <laughs> It, it's the extra stuff that's different. So a lot of it's just absolutely straightforward. And there's some areas where we've expanded or to change the approach that you think, mm, you know, I, I can use a map and I'll get something, but I'm not going to get the best. You get that through going either way because, you know, they're different schemes. So there's going to be some area where they don't translate that. You know, and you can, easy. you can develop a port and see your title, something come to big things, then you can work out which ones you're going to, from the position yeah. of the title, where you're going to have issues. And also, yeah, where do you want to put the effort in? If you could use some effort for the backlist, but you've got some strong backlist titles you want to pay people attention to, you know what they are. Mm. Ping those out and, and get some manual attention. Yeah. yeah. How it seems that the list of, the, of publishers you showed um, were currently sending themes to Nielsen um, is smaller than the publishers I believe are actually adding the theme code to their titles at the moment. Is that the case? And if so, you're expecting more publishers to come and um, this, this was a list, it was a, sort of a, a summary of a list, it's not everybody in there, it's but it's a list of the alpha well, these are sort of quite well known names, I'll never get those on there. Um, but yes, if anybody is, it, 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 it changes quite quickly, so there's a little bit of update as well. But yes, if you're adding a theme, I sent it to us, we can turn it. So. One thing that um, strikes me, I, I do a lot of um, classification for travel books, and this is quite a specific question, so I apologise to anybody who doesn't use geographical qualifiers, um, is there's a couple of areas that, where geographical qualifiers could potentially be improved with you. Uh, one of those is that as 
FEMA is getting more nations coming on board and more um, national qualif uh, qualification and uh, categorization schemes. Those countries are becoming very rich, um, but there are whole other parts of the world which don't have that same richness. And I'm wondering if there's a plan, even you know, 2020, in place to kind of populate the world with that level of rich best data you currently see for countries like the UK. Um, and the second related question to that is about um, geographical qualifiers and uh, languages. I understand we use an English language version of FEMA, and I understand there are other language versions available, um, but the English language version is based around the anglicised place names. Uh, so if, if, of course, if I type in the code for an Italian city using an Italian spelling, I will find it, because the code is transferable between languages. But would there be any way of creating a, a, a a hybridised language version for geographical qualifiers. So if I enter Milan rather than Milan, it recognises that and pulls through the same code. Um, I would have thought so. It sounds like one of Graham Bell, doesn't it? He's uh, <laughs> he runs the uh, that sets up that uh, that uh, search tool. Um, and I think to some extent, I'll have to have a go and see what what happens there, what the options are, where there is a difference. It's pretty good because you can search on like um, scope notes and things like that, not just the heading. So it's a pretty powerful search. So I would have thought if there is an English hub and a, and, um, a, a, a native version of that, of that name, and many are the same, yeah, but there are differences, then it should pick up both. Yes, that's a good point. I'll, I'll put that to Graham. On your first point, it's, this is something we've, we've, we've grappled with, i.e. where as a country which is not yet in FEMA, and yet that is an important country, um, travel guides or for whatever reason, um, you know, a, a, a rich area that you want the same sort of detail. It's slightly delicate in that um, we don't want to sort of go in and say, right, we've divided this up now, and then they come along and say, well, that's not how I would have done it. You've, you know, this isn't the right way of doing it. So we have to be a little bit careful of that. And ideally, I think the plan is to sort of start laying out some proposals and then going to those countries and saying this is what we're going to do. Whether you don't think or not, this is what we've got, you know, run it, run it by them. But there's obviously quite a lot of overheads there. Not only just someone's going to sit down and do all that and then who do you address in that country? It may not all be sort of fed up have a big or a publishers association or whatever, so sometimes it's a bit difficult there. But ultimately, yes, there is a plan um, to look at some of the, to be like, areas or places of, of global interest um, and start adding those even though that country hasn't come in yet because we're going to we recognize that we're going to have to do that but there are sensitivities and political issues around it i mean you know getting the, the chinese structure is, is, is quite quite something i appreciate it's going to be difficult it's just great to know it's on the cards yes yeah, it's on so the cards it's, it's, it's an issue it's a known issue short, it's, it's short coming, absolutely it is on it is on the list yeah any other questions? Any pressure? <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I may. Okay. okay. So what I heard in the room is uh, people under pressure to be able to use FEMA but also maintain the systems that you currently have with Camp Isaac. What would it take, uh, and forgive my naivety if I'm showing no, but what would it take to actually Go to the one standard. So Amazon. 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 <laughs> 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 okay. no, that's the <laughs> And you see, Amazon, you know, that's quite yeah. forthcoming, Amazon, to sort of get the public support. But, and that we're always sort of, you know, trying to sort of give them along. But that is something they are aware of it, they see it, they like it. But they yes, someone said that, yeah, that my stack is embedded in their system. Um, and lots of other things that, you know, some incredibly complex web of, of categories that, that they use, they have to um, put the in that. I think they're trying to roll out some sort of, you know, Europe-wide Europe classification tree, and, and it's got kind of UK where we're sort of running that rather than .com. And I think, well, FEMA is a good place to start, but it's, it's you know, it, it's there, it's got that European um, coverage in there. So I think that's the way they're going to start using it in. So they're working on it, behind the scenes, but they, they don't want to sort of pull out new rugs or, or the changes or scare the horses 
right now, but they're, they're, they're on the case. Can I expand on Amazon a little bit? Amazon and an automatic down wrapping to the nation's existing classification system. Yeah. Because so until the nation's bookstores, independent bookstores, all move to FEMA, you need a way of getting that information out to them as well, because they are important as well as Amazon. But predominantly Amazon. Thank you. It's, it's not going to come in overnight, basically. Yes. I think whatever happens, if, if Amazon has started to, yeah. to ask for it, it's, it's going to happen quicker. <laughs> I think that's the, the main message, isn't it? Um, any other questions? so very much for coming. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you feel like you've learned a lot from this session. Um, just to say all of the information that I gave you at the beginning of this um, bit breakfast is all in our um, monthly what's happening email. So if you don't receive that currently then do let me know and I can add you to the mailing list. Um, but yes, thank you all so much and I hope you get back to your offices. Cheers. <laughs>